We had it last week a big victory that I announced, and it's gotten a lot of positive feedback and interest from, uh, I know you, and other folks who follow this issue closely, which is uh, uh, a Judicial Watch settled a federal lawsuit on behalf of itself and our clients in California against California and the County of Los Angeles that requires Los Angeles County to begin taking steps to clean up to 1.56 million inactive voters off of their election rolls. About one of every four voters on their election rolls is inactive, meaning they haven't voted in many, many years and are unlikely uh, to be able to vote in the sense that they either moved away or are dead. Federal law requires that states and localities take reasonable steps to clean up the rolls. California hadn't done that in 20 years. So as a result of Judicial Watch's litigation, we're going to have significantly cleaner elections in California. Nationally, it's 3.5 million names we think are on the rolls who shouldn't be there. So 1.56 million of them eventually will be removed as a result of this process that's initiated after our settlement agreement. California or Los Angeles County can immediately begin removing, obviously, dead people from the rolls. To give you more details about the case, what happens is the county needs to send out a mailing to those people, on, uh, to many of these names, the 1.5 million names on the rolls. And if they don't respond or otherwise indicate a desire to vote, uh, you know, various issues, we would not want to take anyone off the rolls who wants to be there and intends to vote or just wants to be there. But if they don't get the cards back and it looks like the person's gone, they need to start removing them. And there's a clock that begins ticking. Uh, the first set of names can be removed as early as next month. And then what happens is under federal law, uh, you have to wait for an election or two, depending on when the cards are sent out or when they had been sent out, to begin removing other names. So it will be a slow process. It will be beginning in February, and then after 2020, and then 22, and then up to 24. I mean, our agreement goes through 2024. It took 20 years to get these names onto the rolls. It's going to take many years to get them off. And the law protects because um, the left will get tell you that we're purging names. No, we're not purging names. This is a slow, slower than I would like personally, but the law requires it, a slow, methodical process that has never been followed before in California, but thanks to Judicial Watch, it's going to be followed. Now, I know many say, well, all these people voting fraudulently. I don't know if they were, but I can tell you if you've got dirty rolls, it's an opportunity for fraud because that's a category of names, inactive voters, uh, that bad guys can use to try to vote illegally with and fraudulently with. It's, it's, it's common sense. That's why federal law requires that states take reasonable steps to clean up the rolls. So the big victory now is in LA County. San Diego is terrible voting rolls. There are other counties in, Los Ange in California that have terrible voting rolls. I think there are 11 counties in California that have more people on the rolls that are eligible to vote. L.A. County was terrible. It was 112 percent of the voting age population was on the rolls. Normally, it's like 85 percent of the voting age population registers. So if you've got 112 percent, you've got like 1.5 million inactive voters who shouldn't be there. Unbelievable number. And what a credit to Judicial Watch, our legal team specifically, that we're able to get this done. It's part of a massive election integrity project. And this election integrity project began in, I guess uh, we began it in 2011. We had the first private lawsuits to clean up federal voting rolls filed by Judicial Watch against Indiana and Ohio, two states controlled by Republicans, by the way. Indiana, the case ended after Indiana did what we needed them to do. We settled in Ohio. They sent out one of these mailings that I was talking about. The left went crazy. They challenged that. The Supreme Court said no, they can remove names. And that was a major decision last year. The Husted case, case H-U-S-T-E-D. Go ahead and read about it. But that was a case that validated and vindicated Judicial Watch's approach. So California saw the writing on the wall and said, okay, Judicial Watch will do what you're asking. And I have to say, I'm glad LA County and the Secretary of State of California did this. 
I mean, they could have fought, they could have fought us. I mean, just because the law says what it says and the Supreme Court ruled as it ruled, I mean, you know, politicians don't necessarily mean uh, don't necessarily follow the law, and they fight it, and they get lawyers who will argue everything. And so don't worry, the settlement agreement has ways for Judicial Watch to check that what we're asking for and what the government has agreed to do, in this case LA County, is done. And California, the state secretary of state, is going to send out notices uh, reminding essentially other counties what needs to be done and what the law requires. And of course this will have a national precedent as well. But it goes to show you that it, Oh, it's an incredible story, and I don't say this because I'm president of Judicial Watch, but isn't it remarkable, objectively speaking, that this private entity is doing the job of what the Justice Department, in theory, is supposed to be doing? And obviously the state agencies in California weren't doing. We were just one private group that came in and in one fell swoop handled this major, major problem in California. And it began with, again, as I point out, hard work by our legal team in other cases, like in Ohio and Indiana. And last year we had a case in Kentucky that settled. Actually, it was a consent decree. Kentucky, I think, uh, had one of the worst states in the nation in terms of have the number of counties with more people on the rolls than were eligible to vote. Again, that was a Republican largely controlled state. So this is not a partisan issue, folks. Republicans let the rolls get dirty too. Democrats get, let the rolls get dirty too. Now, what's partisan about the issue, unfortunately, is that the Democratic left hates election integrity. And um, so you get all these left-wing interest groups who uh, oppose us. George Soros, George Soros supports a lot of them, uh, and uh, they oppose our efforts. And they're very much, uh, they've got a tremendous amount of resources involved here. Dozens of groups do this uh, anti-election integrity work on the left. Uh, they oppose voter cleanup, uh, voter roll cleanup, like Judicial Watch has uh, highlighted. Keep on saying they, they keep on lying about the process by calling it voter purges, like there's something nefarious afoot. They hate voter ID. Uh, they hate um, the idea of citizenship verification. Voter ID. Does your state require voter ID? My guess is it doesn't. And even if it does, it's probably a weak voter ID law. I'm going by memory here, but I think there are only 10 states in the United States that require have a strict voter ID law. And that's because of this coordinated effort by the left to oppose election integrity, which I'm convinced uh, is there to uh, this, uh, this opposition to voter uh, election integrity. It's because the left wants to be able to steal elections if necessary. In fact, they weaken voter integrity. You've got, for instance, in California, which we're still investigating this issue, and I know many of you have asked about this, is what about voter har ballot harvesting? We have third parties in California, thanks, now le it's now legal to do this, go around and collect ballots and deliver them to polling places. And there's no check on any of that. No one watches who's doing it. No one makes sure that they aren't suppressing ballots or creating them out of whole cloth. Virtually no way of checking what's going on there. In North Carolina, you may have heard about a, an election that may have been stolen by a Republican operative who did ballot harvesting, which is illegal in North Carolina. That's why it's illegal, because of the issues I raised. But it's legal in California, which raises the prospect of fraud. So we're not done in California. It's not just about cleaning up the rolls. It's ensuring election integrity through voter ID, figuring out what's going on with this ballot harvesting mess in, Ca in California and other places. So your Judicial Watch is on it. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.